and a very big hello to all the young Indians and a very, very young Indian who is holding a placard of my husband that she is also a Sanjeev Bhatt. Thank you so much. Who says that Sanjeev Bhatt's voice has been silenced? I disagree totally. <laughs> Respected friends with whom I am sharing the stage today and all the organizers without whom this program would not have been possible. I would not have been here meeting you all, beautiful people. And a very big hello to all the young Indians. And a very, very young Indian who is holding a placard of my husband that she is also a Sanjeev Bhatt. I am so glad to be here. I am always glad being at Kerala, in fact. The day from I mean, uh, since past uh, five years now, the day the judgment came, that was on 20th June 2019, since that day until today, I constantly receive messages from different parts of Kerala just telling me in their language that they are with us. And it has always inspired me a lot. Uh, I could not much break out from the heated uh, lecture with the, my brother gave just now because of the language barrier. But the moment I've entered the hall, there are certain words which I could catch. Shweta Bhatt, Sanjeev Bhatt, welcome. We are with you and I think that suffices. We are talking about dignity. I mean, it's a very rare topic. People don't talk about it, but it's high time we do. And I always say that there is nothing beyond dignity and self-respect. I There are lakhs and lakhs of police officers who must be wearing uniform. But when I see my husband perform his duty, I always say that he wears his uniform with utmost pride and dignity. So dignity is very important in whatever aspects. And we are all almost striving for it, fighting for it. Imagine we have to fight for dignity is such a pathetic state of affairs. India is a diverse country. We enjoy this diversity. Our strength is in this diversity. So many states, so many languages, we all wear different clothes, we all speak different languages, we all, there are so many festivals, different festivals, but that is our strength. We cannot and we should not streamline it into one particular thing, one particular religion or one particular faith. So respecting each other, respecting each other's religion is of utmost importance. I think 
at least you young people of India should do whatever you can to make other people aware of it. That one should not abuse others' religion. It, it's not dignified. It's just not done. We have to respect others' religion, others' faith, others, whatever beliefs they have in their own religion. That is what makes India a democratic country. You all almost know what I am fighting for. I have been my husband's voice, which is very difficult. I can't be his voice. I have not ever near to being his voice, but in his absence, I have to. So I fight for his uh, release. And my only intention is that I bring him home with utmost dignity and calor, which he deserves. The fight has been long, it has been a tough fight, it has been an unequal fight. I fight this legally, they fight it politically. They have everything with them. The institutions, money, power, and uh, you name it, and they have the best lawyers in the country. On our side, I have my husband, I have his truth, I have some very good friends who are fighting with us. I have the love of lots of people who are there here and all over India and even outside India. And just a conviction that he performed his duty. A police officer, when he sees a rape being committed, he doesn't go there and sees whether the girl is a Muslim or a Hindu or of a different caste. No, that is not his job. That is exactly what he did. That my duty is to see that law and order is maintained. And he's being penalized for that. The fight had started almost since 2002 when the riots broke out in Gujarat. He was an intelligence officer. He was chief of intelligence there. And he disagreed with certain things which was happening around. In 2009, when he was called by SIT, and they asked him about the reports, he very bravely said whatever the truth was. Other officers pretended amnesia. My husband could have done the same thing, but he did not. He gave all the reports and stated that it was either by design or by inefficiency or whatever, but the state was responsible for the massacre which happened in Gujarat. So from that day onwards, our life has started becoming difficult. When Mr. Bodhi was Chief Minister of Gujarat, he suspended my husband and then when he became the Prime Minister of India, the first thing he did was to take away my husband's duty, which he adores. And uh, for him, his duty was the topmost priority. My husband is incarcerated for a crime he never committed. And he is behind bars since five and a half years now and I'm fighting for his release. And the courts, the judiciary, they don't even grant us bail. All the judges whom our cases are assigned are either judges who are about to retire and who want a very plump posting after retirement, and they have been given that. And uh, either they are judges who are loaded with lots of criminal cases on them. And as our case proceeds, they come out clean from all the cases. So it is very difficult to fight even in the judiciary right now. But let's hope for the change. And uh, let's hope that our fight continues. 
my husband is not the one, he is a very strong man, he is not the one who is going to bend or succumb to any of the pressures. And uh, I am emotional, I do cry sometimes, but I am not weak. So together I think we will sort this out. And at any cost, I won't rest till I bring my husband home and I won't let anybody else rest till I bring my husband home. <laughs> uh, I had told them before that instead of this being a one-way communication, I would rather be pleased if you have any specific questions which you would like to ask me, I would be more than honored to answer you all. Anything you would like to know, anything, just let me know. Hi, ma'am. Hello, please. So, uh, I'm someone who is following uh, Mr. Sanjeev Bhatt's Twitter handle for a very long time. Okay. And. Uh, so uh, I've seen even after you know uh, he went to the jail, you constantly update us uh, with everything that is happening regarding the case. And uh, I've seen very recently, you know, your family members also speak out on uh, all the issues that has been happening. And we understand how difficult it is to keep fighting this fight. So, um, I've often wondered, you know, the kind of support you've mentioned, you have uh, good friends and, you know, people who support you. But uh, I personally think we live in a country uh, where it is very difficult to even speak out. So, like, what gives you that courage, uh, you know, that hope that, you know, you can speak? Right. Okay. For me personally, whenever I want to speak out, there is something that holding me back, uh, a challenge, right? So can I, you know, say these things in this country at this moment, right? So what gives you that hope and courage that you can and, you know, you can keep fighting this fight? This government thrives on four things. It's fear. It's greed, it's punishment, and it's reward. If you don't succumb to any of these things, I think you, you can and you should whatever you want to. In a democratic country, we are free to speak whatever we want. And if a person like Sanjeev Bhatt, who has sacrificed his career, his life, his family's life, to be a voice of millions of people, then I think that speaks volumes. You need not be afraid because you don't have that much to lose. And even if you have to, someone will have to come out and speak. We can't be dumb and we don't speak anything just because we are being pressurized or we are being harassed. No, they can harass one, two, five, twenty, hundred. But if all of us with the same agenda come down, I think it would become very difficult for them. See, this is the problem with the youth today. They don't think. They don't relate. We feel that uh, I am not interested in politics. No, that is not the way. If you don't go to politics, politics will come to you. Because we are all affected by the policies, by the decisions taken by the government. So we have to be active. And uh, you people cannot find a single question to ask me. That is also not good. So you better think, better introspect, see to it that how you can contribute come something to the society? How can you be helpful? How can you defend the defenders who have already fought for the society? That is very important. Anybody else? Yeah, please. 
Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Sanjeev Singh, sir. Yes. And I have to ask you that um, Sanjeev Singh, sir, was in a high position at that time, and it, only because he said the truth, he is behind the bars now. So, what I have to ask is, did his co-officers help you in this fight? Come again. I want. What I want to ask you is, did his co-officers help you in this fight till now, or uh, are they against you in this fight? Who the people in the jail right now? No. Uh, when he went to the bars. Uh... Actually, you are talking about the colours. Yeah. See, as I told you that people are driven by two things, I mean four, but as far as officers are concerned, either fear or greed. So the officers which, who want a good postings, who want to be in good books, uh, very secretly they call me and they say that, uh, Shweta, we are with you. But the people who cannot speak out loudly, how can they be helpful to me? So it's almost like, uh, Either they are with the government and against us, or they are not with us. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, my name is Dr. Nabilam. I can't see. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Yes. So, madam, actually, you are uh, currently attending a dignity conference of fraternity movement. So, actually, fraternity movement was formed in 2017, and we rely on three basic principles. It's democracy, social justice, and fraternity. So uh, the political stand that we keep uh, in the current political scenario of our country, we know that we have a fascist regime in front of us, led by the Sangpariwa, led by the RSS, which is being led by uh, from Nagpur, by Mohan Bhagavan. So actually, whatever happens in our country, the basic uh, what it relies basically is on the principles of RSS. The Sangha Bhairavar has been trying all these years since independence, even before independence, to bring out a political regime in their favor. That is a reality in India now. And even your husband was a victim who spoke against the Sangha Bhairavar, who spoke against their agenda, and he is now behind bars. So what actually our country is demanding right now is a political renaissance, a political movement that could outthrow the fascist regime from India. If your husband needs to get out of jail, what uh, we basically need is to outthrow this BJP from the central government, from the political structure. So as a person who's fighting for your husband's or pain, it's fighting for your husband's justice. We are all in support with you. What I ask uh, from people like you, what can we do to bring out a new political movement which is uh, forceful enough, which is strengthful enough to outthrow this RSS regime from our country? We have uh, uh, an India alliance who is against the BJP, but we can see that alliance is very poor in fighting RSS. Even Nidish Kumar went down yesterday. So we have a weak, uh, we have a weak opposition in our country. So what our country demands is a new political movement, which is strengthful enough to outthrow the RSS regime. Like so, me, so like how, how how can we support? How as a person we can see, support? See, we have to uh, understand one thing. We cannot change the people who are on the other side. We cannot do that. It is we will have to be well equipped to fight them. So that is one thing. Another thing, they are very organized and they persistently follow the rules and regulations. That thing is lacking with us. We are very enthused today about one thing. We want to do certain things. We will do certain things. And then with a span of two, three days or maybe a week, you know, that enthusiasm goes away. That is where we need to strengthen ourselves. 
we have to persistently pursue this battle till we bring it to a logical end. So, and how to do that? You people are young, you use internet, you use media, you should do whatever you can to make people aware. Mass of people don't agree. We cannot have a movement which can persistently fall. So, these are some basic views, but we can work it out on this. Yes. Namaskaram. Uh, I am Amina. Hello. Where are you? Here, let's say. Yes. So, I am Amina. So, I want to ask you that you said in your speech, like, they are fighting politically and I am fighting legally. But I want to ask you, like, there are many political prisoners and I, I know that there are going to be more political prisoners. I want to ask you, how much this law helping you? You know, like, now, you know, they are even changing the constitution. They just ignored, rejected two words from the preamble. So I want to ask you, how much this law is helping you? Is that real, reliable, that is legally, is legal reliable for political prisoners, for the people who, uh, who, who actually has been uh, injustice, who are suffering from this injustice, from the government, who has all the power, who has all the money and all. How much this law help you to fight against the government, against the prime minister? That's my question. Thank you, everyone. See, what happens is, they have a very clear modus operandi. First, they come out with a private complaint from anybody. My husband is facing cases, 32-year-old case, 28-year-old case, by a private complaint given by somebody. Uh, suddenly, somebody comes and says that before 32 years, I was made to do sit-ups on the floor. So that is the complaint. And then we are arrested on the base of that very flimsy statement by a person. Sometimes it so happens that the person who made the complaint dies. Then onto the complaint stays and then we are being arrested. And then we get into the legal loop of getting bail and we cannot come out. Here the prosecution, I mean the prosecution lawyers are absolutely close to Amit Shah, both the lawyers. Judges are, as I said, that uh, all the cases of uh, corruption and everything has been marginalized as far as they deal with our cases. A single judge is being posted for four, four and a half years and he doesn't get transferred. He rejects all of our applications. He doesn't give us defense witnesses. And he conducts a very unfair trial with a single motive of punishing Sanjeev Bhatt or incarcerating him or giving a verdict of life imprisonment where not a single proof is there. So this is how they function. And as for you talking about love, love is beyond everything maybe so. Yeah, that is what keeps me motivated. And uh, yes, I keep fighting for my husband that way. Thank you. I think we'll conclude uh, this question answer session here. Yeah. Thank you.